Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker, and welcome to another Let's Play for Caveman to Cosmos, the epic mod to Civilization 4 Beyond the Sword. If you're unfamiliar with it, well, it basically takes Civilization 4 and stretches it out so much and gets into so much detail, expanding on the systems within the game, the technologies, so much, so much. It's actually incredible. Uh, we played it once before on the channel, uh, just to give you an idea of the scope. Um, we got to 200 episodes, my longest series ever. Um, and I think we were at the beginning of the information age, which for Cayman the Cosmos is like less than halfway uh, through the tech tree. So <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot that can be going on in this game. And we're going to get stuck in. And this time we're going to be playing it on a little bit of a harder difficulty from the start. So maybe I get my ass kicked. Um, I... So I used to be able to play Civilization 4 on Immortal and win sometimes. It's been a long time since I've done that. We are going to be playing on Immortal, which is normally the second to highest difficulty, but I think C2C uh, actually raises that one above Deity. It's Nightmare. We're not going to be doing that. Instead, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to do a custom game, indeed. And I've picked out what I'm going to do. Pretty much all this stuff is just going to be normal. Normal start tier. Um, I think normal. Just normal speed. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of options for C2C. And I've turned some of them on. I'll just kind of briefly go through it. Advanced Diplomacy, Realistic Corporations. I mean, whatever. This diplomacy is a little bit more advanced. Corporations can spread on their own. Um, I don't really know how, what else it does beside that. Slightly more options for espionage, um, personalized map. There's just names of stuff. Uh, cool, you know, I like that. Um, barbarians can become civilizations uh, if you don't take care of them. So that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. So there's, there's tons more stuff over here. Um, we got revolutions on. If uh, people are pretty unhappy, you might have rebel civs attempting to break away. I don't know. It says it makes the AI less challenging, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. I think it seems really cool. Tech diffusion, so tech will just slowly diffuse to civilizations that are behind. I think that's also pretty cool. Developing leaders, so you gain experience points for your leaders and things can happen from that. And I think that's it. And that's pretty much it. We are playing on Immortal. Like I said, there is Nightmare here as well. And who am I going to be playing as? Well... Is it Lincoln? I think so. <laughs> We're going to be playing as Lincoln of the Americans. I am American. Last time I played, we were the Ottomans uh, in honor of my wife, who um, is Turkish. And uh, this time we're going to be honoring, I guess, my uh, culture, which is American. Italian-American, but American for sure. And I think that's all the setup we're going to do. Everything else is just going to be random. I, I don't care. Uh, I'm not going to change this. It can be random, random. I don't know, like, does this mean that they will have random leaders with random sieves? That's kind of weird, but uh, maybe it actually links up. I, I suspect that it does, but whatever. We're going to go ahead and launch it. And there you go. I'm, I'm super excited. I've been thinking about this game uh, for a while now. Kind of being like, huh, you know, what, maybe I should dive back into it. Because it really is just an incredibly unique experience, I think. There, there's no game like this. <laughs> Not even Civilization IV is like Caveman to Cosmos. Um, if you want to play it yourself, uh, it's pretty easy. You just add the thing, the folder, right? Download it from... Uh, I don't know, Syphonatics, I think, is where their homepage is, and then Mod DB or something. And then just uh, unpack it into your mods folder, wherever you have um, Beyond the Sword installed. And that's it. And we are Lincoln of the American Empire. Yes, the sun rises in the year 2 million BC. Wonderful. Didiger, I don't know where it gets this from. <laughs> I mean, this is somewhat close to my, my name, but uh, I don't know why this knows it necessarily and why it doesn't use my Steam name or something because I am playing this on Steam. Anyways, um, I'm actually 
Hopefully this doesn't screw things up, but it's a little bit too loud for me and I need to lower the, my own personal volume. And there we go. There we have it. Civilization 4. We are an ancestral brand, uh, band, and we can kind of settle anywhere. Unfortunately, in my test game, I found such a nice start compared to this. Um, I guess it's fine. There's lots of rivers, lots of forests. I mean, we're not going to be able to do much with this until we can chop down forests, but I suppose that's okay. We do start with a nice three production tile. Nothing, nothing better than three total resources. I mean, the commerce is fine, I suppose. Um, I could consider moving up a little bit. Then there's access to this, which maybe the hill will be nice to have in the future. Um, I think we're just gonna settle where we are. So I, I have played this before, uh, Caveman to Cosmos. It was a few updates ago, so I know that they've changed quite a bit since then. Um, maybe, I don't know, when did I play this? Four years ago? F five? No, that's impossible. Three? Maybe three. Um, and I'm by no means an, an expert in uh, how the game plays out, but it doesn't matter. Whatever. We're going to have fun, and that's what matters the most. So yeah, sure. I'm going to settle here. It's not that great of a starting position. Um, there's no immediate resources that we start with, but uh, I think that's going to be okay. Washington, D.C. Boom. And what do we want to build? Right, so... I mean, there's a couple of things that we're going to go over. If you know Civilization 4, I mean, the game more or less from this layer plays out the same. You get techs, you build stuff, you grow, you research. Um, there's a little bit more going on inside of the cities, and there's just a lot more stuff that you can build and research. Um, so, I mean, for example, right, the Brute. Just your basic tier 1, tier 0 starting unit. Alpha and female just gives uh, a little bit of extra food. Local stability bonus per turn, and uh, I want to say that's minus three to disease. Interesting. Alpha male gives a little bit of production. Minus three to crime. Requires strong man, which I believe we are, and we can make a stone thrower, right? This is a, a range unit. Um, I think we're just going to go with a brute. We do start with a brute. Um, but I think I will get a second military unit just for the exploration and to make sure, you know, I, I don't know. I, I want to feel a little bit more safe here. So I think we are going to start with that. And then probably going into the alpha male for production. Could do it the other way around. It's also somewhat tempting. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. A little more production, a little less crime. Now let's just get the brood out there. Um. So, we can then also uh, look into the city. So, over here, not cultures, not that, no. Properties. The city has no properties yet. Okay, then we're not, we're not going to actually worry about that. Uh, what we should look at, first and foremost, what is it? F12? That takes a screenshot in Steam. Um, leadership? Leaders? Lincoln. Because we have some bonuses that we start with. We are scientific. So we have a little bit of extra unhappiness. And when war happens, we got a little bit of more war unhappiness. But we do just get extra science per city. A flat bonus. Bonus uh, percentage from scientists. We can upgrade units outside of our borders. Cool. We make military units a little bit slower. Uh, we're faster building some stuff as well. Though most of this, eh, yeah, this is what workers do. And also we can build like science buildings a little bit faster. Cool. Humanitarian. Bonus health, bonus happiness, more war unhappiness. So, like, we're really not down for the war, sort of. I mean, Lincoln did fight a war, I guess, um, but that made people pretty unhappy. <laughs> sure. The enemies also suffer that. Uh, we do get first aid, sure, for recon. People like us a little bit more. Higher maintenance costs for number of cities. And we build nature preserves faster, as well as make a bunch of stuff a little bit quicker. Cool. Things that improve quality of life, I suppose, and get a little bit of happiness. Uh, citizen times negative two divided by plus three disease. Uh, so this makes us healthier. <laughs> I don't really know. One multiplied by negative two is negative two divided by plus three. Uh, 
Um, okay. I guess that this is going to reduce our disease. We'll actually kind of have to see how that plays out. This is It's kind of like plus three disease per turn in the city. Okay, but we also have a negative trait. We're idealistic. Bad, bad. Don't be idealistic. We do get additional culture and birth rate, but anarchy time takes longer and civic upkeep is more expensive. So, I mean, everything is kind of like ups and downs. These are the positive traits. And these are the negative. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, the way that culture works is like, so we technically start as the Americans with American culture. Um, I'm not really sure. Like the way that, Amer uh, sorry, culture works in C2C is quite a bit different than the base game. I think you like, you need to fulfill some qualifications and then you build the culture. And then you have that culture. And then that can unlock certain things. I don't think we get anything by default. Um, from that but nonetheless i mean we do start with a single tribal guardian they're a little bit beefier um may only exist on an earth plot okay from the military branch let's go out and explore uh no no we will not <laughs> tribal guardians cannot leave um so yeah okay i think we'll just automatically build up you can so we can just say hey please build up some crime fighting yeah, sure. You're going to reduce crime in the city you're in. That seems great. Um, we can also do restful recovery for additional healing, whatever. It doesn't matter. Basically, it's like different ways in which you can fortify yourself. And uh, that gives certain bonuses. So because of this particular guy, he can do some crime fighting. He can also do some investigation if you have criminals already. Um, and then, of course, we pick our research. It's kind of curious that it doesn't pop up here. And uh, so here's the tech tree. Here's the tech tree. Okay, we're now in what? The information age, perhaps? Nuclear into information. Uh, eventually breaking you out into... Does it tell you? Nanotech. Uh, maybe. And then eventually into transhuman. And then eventually galactic. Oh my goodness. Cosmic. And finally, Transcendent, where you get like crazy things like horizon breaking. You want to build the interstellar event horizon probe? Yeah, sure, it's possible. Experimental cosmology? We get the distant Big Bang probe, sure, why not? Why not get a hyperspace simulated universe uh, or build a parallel universe? Now, technically, you can go into space. I mean, you have all these kind of like space techs. The map doesn't actually support that. You can play on special maps that do that, but I opted not to do uh, not not to go for that. I think it's kind of I don't know. It didn't seem that that interesting or that like it would work that well. Kind of weird to me, so we opted out. But whatever, we can just stay on Earth and do galactic stuff here and pretend. Or probably the game will be over by that point. Like I said, it took me 200 episodes. My episodes are usually about 25 to 35 minutes. Uh, and that got us maybe to, to here? Maybe it was not even that far. I actually can't remember. Um, feel free to go back and check the 200th episode and see what text we were researching. And then we can figure it out. But for now, we have our first choice. Do we want language? Just gives happiness as well as the possibility to build folklores. Yeah, sure. Um, wonders of nature. All these different kinds of wonders of stuff. Okay. Cool. Language is pretty useful. Nomadism. Wanderers. Enables a bunch of upgrades. And then cave dwellings is health. Enables a bunch of cultures. As well as uh, PC... I forget what PC stands for. Maybe somebody can also let me know down in the comments if you're familiar. And uh, enables uh, city garrison and shelter building. Honestly, like I have no idea which way we would want to go for. Scavenging or gathering being the first things. Maybe. I mean, getting oral tradition... Probably seems pretty good. I think storytellers, you can do some interesting stuff with them by, like, creating all of these creation myths and stuff. Like, all this folklore. Maybe you need a storyteller to establish that. But I think initially... Scavenging camp or gatherers. Mmm, that's tough. I mean, again, I have no idea. We'll start with nomadism. Because it does kind of open up uh, these two right away. Cave dwelling eventually gets a shelter building. We're not in a cave, so we're not going to be able to build a cave dwelling. All right. Housing animal burrow, housing cave dwelling. Cave dwellings are great, but we're not in a cave, so it doesn't matter. 
Okay. We do have some, what, resources nearby? There's just a tribal village. There are some caves over there. Tall grass, very tall grass, some lush terrain. We've got some bamboo and marsh. No notable uh, resources just yet. Um, oh, but we do have a brute. All right, well, we're going to tell our brute to go out over here. And that's it for our first turn. Whew. <coughs> Looks like we got money for that. We also discovered a new landmark with Osirpo Mountain. Um, okay, we'll just let the things continue onward. You can see here, uh, growth in the beginning is basically freaking non-existent also it takes 4,631 food to grow basically uh, you're just not gonna grow for a very very long time right humanity was not able to reproduce so wildly for <laughs> much much further away from now i mean technically we're even breaking things by like having such a settlement as we are i guess this is kind of way to show like it's not a city it's just where we've settled Probably we should just be uh, hunter-gatherers for a while and just no be nomadic. For, but, okay, sure. I think we are going to be hunter-gatherers for a while, but not nomadic. Um, let's go back over here and uh, let's pop this thing. And otherwise, just continue building. Yep. Continue onwards. We're going to go and see what this thing... I think it gave us money. Actually, we had 140 before. It didn't really tell us. Is there a way to see the logs 24 research versus uh, for nomadism that's nice actually two turns worth pretty happy about that a stone thrower another unit uh, okay well, maybe we didn't need the brute but now we've got a lot of units to go explore with so that's fine yeah just go explore Um, if you're not familiar with Civ 4, I mean, it does not have one unit per tile, which was a big thing that Civilization 5 introduced. And uh, you have things called Doom Stacks when you start fighting. We're quite a ways away from encountering some Doom Stacks. I kind of like that we got the names of these forests as well. People are discovering uh, Uluru and Kilimanjaro. Okay. And we've met the Chinese Empire. They like the cut of our jib. That's interesting. We do not speak the same language in first impression. We share philosophy, so we can't really uh, talk to them. Uh, they're organized and charismatic and temperamental. Interesting. Hold sh down shift and mouse over again to open up the next trait's full display. Okay, I don't have to look at any of that. Uh, yeah, sure. There shall be peace in our time, I hope. Farewell! I don't know where we have encountered them. Wu is the worst em enemy of me. Okay. We're also the best friend, probably. So there's the Chinese. They do have a brute. I wonder, can they declare war on me? <laughs> I think, sort of, you kind of start. Leadership level of zero? Uh, I don't know what that means. Okay. I'm happy. I'm pretty happy with this additional brute over here. A nomad, uh, I will remain for life, in love with distant and uncharted places. And there you have Grimith adding his voice to the game. I what's his actual uh, YouTube name? Maybe I kind of will look it up because he's the one that first introduced me to this game. Uh, Grimith something something. I don't know. He does a lot of let's plays, um, and did do uh, quite a bit. And actually, he was my inspiration to do my initial CTC uh, Let's Play because he stopped after a certain amount of time. And I was like, I want to see what is going on. Uh, I, I'm unsatisfied uh, that, that he stopped only, I mean, still like <sighs> very, very early in the Caveman to Cosmos span of time. And I was like, I really want to see more and nobody else has done this, so I'm going to do it. And so I did. So thank you, Grimith. I think that's also how he got his voice on here. So yeah, cool. We can build wanderers. How are they are better than brutes? I have no idea. Press alt. Press control. Press shift. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Perhaps not. 
Um, and we can also, we got some promotions. Yeah, sure. Great. Um, you want me to go for cave dwelling. It's a shelter building, gathering. I mean, we don't have actually anything to gather around here, so I don't see a huge reason to go for those things. We don't need the health. I don't know about shelter. Let's go for language. I like talking. I mean, that's that's what I do uh, here a lot, right? You can tell. Okay, we found some lakes. Still no actual um, wonders. Hey, there it is. Lake by call. The Russian region of Siberia, isn't it? The most voluminous freshwater lake in the world, containing roughly 20% of the world's unfrozen surface, surface freshwater. And it's the deepest. And it's the clearest. And the oldest. Good lord, Lake Baikal. Okay. Uh, you're actually really cute on this map. And we received 500 gold. I, I don't know who's paying us that for that. But uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> So, I don't know. I think, like, if you build next to this and it's within your territory, maybe you can build something that gives it a bonus. <sighs> That's tough. I don't know. Whatever. Keep exploring. Okay, we found the Chinese again. They're just exploring stuff around here. Fine. We're also going to do the same. There are those caves over there. Mount Sinai has been discovered. We're working towards language. Our brute is almost done. Ah, the northern part of the map. We found some tundra. Interesting. Um, still, we have not encountered any uh, ye barbarians of any kind. And what do you give me? Experience. Okay, that's fine. The brute is done. We have trained our first military unit, forming the backbone of your earliest armies. Very well, carry on. We can now build a wanderer. But why? You're an explorer. You have a bunch of different styles on here. Okay. I don't know. You're a recon unit, technically. I don't know why I would make you. You're technically, okay, you're a recon unit. Sure. <laughs> um, I think what we are going to do now is go for the alpha male. If we go and examine our city, you can see crime is on the rise. Disease has kind of stabilized. We're at 33 here, but we're getting minus 5. As this goes up, you will start to get modifiers. Uh, modifiers. Conceptual. So we got the, we just got common cold disease going on over here, right? Because our disease is at 33. As this rises, more scary diseases will be introduced depending on your disease level, as well as new technologies will also start to uncover uh, unlock different things. Education is kind of the same. Education is just going to continue plummeting for super long because we just don't even know what education is. The pollution, yeah, we can pretty much ignore this stuff. Crime can also be a problem. It's not actually causing us anything right now. Um, oh yeah, look at that. We've got uh, C, A, C, North American, and C, N, C, and North American. Active culture, and yeah, okay, sure. I don't know what those what those letters mean. These things can become a huge problem. <laughs> they can be a really, really big problem. But for now, I mean. Not really much to worry about. Revolt status is stay is safe as well, which is pretty interesting. You can also bribe. Uh, yeah, okay. No need to bribe. So, yeah. I mean, we are going to go with the alpha male because I think the production early in the game makes a difference. Whereas, plus one food doesn't really do much. Like, you could start accumulating it now. Um, but eventually, I think you get... Is it text that lower how much food you need to grow? Or do you just get so much more food available i don't really remember how it works but okay cool we got ourselves another brute i'm just gonna use him to kind of explore i kind of wish now that i uh, no i'm gonna use him to explore a little bit eventually we're gonna get a wanderer and we're gonna send that wanderer out somewhere hello developing nations should work together to catch up okay minus three on our first impression 
But still, we're just at zero. We do not speak the same language. I mean, we can't do anything. Nobody really has a strong opinion on us one way or another. You did uh, level up. So let's take care of that. Now, there's a lot of new promotions. And clothes, bonus for his recons and strike team, hunters, ruffians, strike team, armed guard, right? Plus one on defense only, a modifier of defense. Bonuses versus criminals, ruffians, and strike teams. Two chance to withdraw. Just woodsmen. That seems pretty good. Higher chance to defend. As well as a bonus to subdue animal and uh verse animals, which I think is all pretty good. And we have a fair amount of forests around us, so I think I am gonna go with the woodsman over here. Let's continue seeing what's uh, what's going on out out in these locations. There are oh, what's our first animal that we've encountered. Hello. Now animals are pretty interesting because you can hunt them. I mean, you if you kill them, you get stuff. Solomon of the Israeli Empire is here. Okay, minus two first impression. Actually, you kind of like me. No, you're still at zero. Plus two, plus one, and minus two. There shall be peace in our time. Richard has made a technological breakthrough, rapidly advancing their progress. Sure, cool. Good job. Knowledge is power. Um, I can attack this hawk. We will get murdered by it. Now, how is that? <laughs> uh, why? Minus 50% versus animals. Okay. Well, don't uh, attack the hawk then. Fine. Pamakala! Literally meaning Cotton Castle. This springs of the result of earthquakes. The waters are rich in minerals, particularly chalk, which has been deposited on the cliff over centuries. Now it looks like a white frozen waterfall. Hot springs are believed to have curative powers, healing, arthritis, and asthma. These properties were first known by the Greeks and Romans, who built the city of Hierapolis, holy city around the warm springs known below Pamakala. The water was captured in a pool known since the days of the Romans as the Sacred Pool. Now it is located in modern-day Turkey, and there's a really nice Pamakala restaurant uh, right up the street that has some pretty good uh, Turkish food. So I like it. Um, and I think that's actually going to be the end of this episode. Holy crap. I gotta say, I'm super excited. Super, super, I was looking back there. Sorry, super excited to be playing this game again. You know, it's gonna be a pretty slow and methodical start, and uh, that's fine, but ooh, they're just, I say slow, but actually there's just so much to do in this game constantly. So many different decisions to be making all the time. Why did I gain so much points here? from land. Why is my land so much more valuable than China's? I don't know. Okay. Doesn't matter. What does matter is I'm super excited. I hope y'all are too. Um, we're going to be taking this I mean, to the end and last time we played until we basically just we won technically. Our score was dominant. Our power was dominant. It would have just been kind of a grueling either just clicking through turns to some alternative victory or conquering uh, our remaining neighbors, which would also have been fairly tedious because they wouldn't have really put up a fight. It would have just been a lot of clicking and moving stuff around. So I don't know how this series is going to end, but uh, I intend on going uh, for the long run. I I've been hankering for a kind of long run game. Terra Invicta is not yet out as of uh, the release, which kind of got my brain started on this when I when I tried the demo and I watched some Let's Plays of the demo. Um, but I digress. Hope you guys are excited about this as I am and uh, that you're going to stick around and see how we do. We've met some of our initial neighbors. We're going in towards an alpha male. Washington, D.C. Let's go, baby. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And like I said, that you'll continue to join me as we progress uh, from cavemen to cosmos. That's how the game works. And uh, yeah, until then, my name is Man the Maker. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.